AstroPixel processor is the most underappreciated, misunderstood and misused astrophotography application that I know of. You read or hear statements that AstroPixel processor is the astrophotography editing tool for the Facebook generation, who wants to do the editing instantly or quick and dirty, but doesn't want to spend the time you would need in PixInsight. You also encounter a lot of one-on-one -on -one comparisons between AstroPixel processor and PixInsight, in which PixInsight always wins. And then on the other extreme, you see videos of senior experienced astrophotographers who do their whole workflow with AstroPixel processor and proclaim it as the best tool for everything. And while reading and seeing all of that, my head goes boom. So given AstroPixel processor is releasing version 2.0 just around now, it's a very good moment to look at what AstroPixel processor is and what it isn't what changes in version 2.0, and at the end I will show you on my computer how to use AstroPixel processor optimally to have the easiest, fastest, and most reliable stacking experience. Hey, this is View Into Space, I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So let's start with what AstroPixel processor is and what it isn't. It is often compared to PixInsight and both are labeled as a one-stop shop for astrophotography, stacking and processing. Now to understand the reality we have to look a bit in the history of these two applications. AstroPixel processor was created as a stacking software. That's its main strength, that's its main purpose. And you see it that more than 50% of the user interface is dedicated only for that purpose. Now they also added then some editing tools, but that absolutely pales compared to PixInsight. It was more done to give people who only have AstroPixel processor a chance to actually complete the editing process. To use a comparison, every cell phone today has a flashlight. You would still not take this with you to an expedition as a flashlight. You would use a dedicated flashlight, right? And that's about the same with AstroPixel processor. Now when we look at PixInsight, you see the exact opposite. PixInsight was mainly created as a collection of processes which mostly focus on the post-processing part. And then they had these few processes about integration, registration, and so on. And they were then combined to a script to the weight-based batch processing, which we know today. But given that it is only a script and not really a core functionality or a core process of PixInsight, you already see that this was not the main purpose of this software. And that's why, from my point, to compare these two packages side by side holistically doesn't make a lot of sense, because they emphasize on different phases of the astrophotography process. So that all said, when I talk now about the version 2 improvements of AstroPixel processor, I will only talk about the stacking part, and the same goes with the process that I show you on the computer afterwards. Because quite honestly, I find AstroPixel processor not worthy from an editing point of view. And when we talk about money, there is a 30-day free trial. So please download AstroPixel processor in its 2.0 version and just give it a try and see how it performed compared to whatever stacking software you're using right now. And if you're then convinced there are two models, you can go with a subscription model where you pay around 60 bucks a year, or you can buy it in an owner license and you pay a one-off fee of $165 and you have it forever. So now let's discuss version two. From a UI perspective, not a lot has happened. And that's okay because it's quite intuitive as it is right now. The big changes happened under the hood. AstroPixel processor just got 20 to 30% more performant than before. 
And if you own a Mac M1, or you're very lucky and you own a Mac M2, you will feel that even more because Astro Pixel Processor runs now natively on these platforms. It also utilizes the memory better as you do not have to limit it anymore, but it will assign the memory dynamically from the point of how much is available. One very annoying part until now of Astro Pixel Processor was that it didn't save anything. So if you closed it, you had to define each directory and select each option from scratch again every time. And that finally, thankfully, stopped now. So you can save now the whole thing, or it automatically actually saves everything that you change, that you enter. So that's a huge improvement. And last but not least, they changed the window management. So the annoying pop-up with all the codes that scroll through went away. And if you use multiple screens, you can now separate the picture preview screen and do it on a separate window. With that, I will jump now to my computer and show you there how easy and efficient it is to use Astro Pixel Processor for stacking. Okay, welcome to my computer. So this is the first impression of app when it opens and it's probably the same as with Pix Inside when you look the first time at it. It looks highly confusing, there's a lot of output and stuff, you have no clue what it is. And it's a little bit the same with Pix Inside too. Once you see through it, it's much easier than you actually think. So let's first deal with this here. This was before in an annoying pop-up. Now it's actually integrated here. We actually need none of this. So you take this, take it over, it's gone, forget about it. <laughs> Great. Now let's see the new version 2.0. So there's a few things that changed. First of all, when you went here to CFG, you could actually enter how much memory you want to use. You cannot do that anymore. That's a good thing. It does it dynamically, forget about it and leave everything here as it is. What you can still change is how many CPU cores you want to actually utilize for processing. I would recommend just take your whole CPU cores minus one. So I have eight cores, so I use seven. The next thing that changed is this here. This is the main directory where everything is going to happen. So it's on a hard drive where you have enough space. And before you had every time you opened app, you had to define this again. Now you define it once. Here, for example, app main is my directory. You say open. It's here. Every time you start it up, it's already set by default and you can forget about it. Same, by the way, with the settings in all of these writers. You, do, you go through that once you set whatever you want, it will stay forever. You don't have to change it every time you open it, except you obviously want to. And by the way, just to show you here in CFG, you can actually say now that the image viewer should be in a separate window if you, for example, have a second screen and you want to have it full screen there. With that, let's get going. So app is actually divided in three areas. The first one is this, which is now still mostly black. That's the image viewer. And then on the left side, you have everything that has to do with stacking. And on the right side, you have everything that has to do with post-processing. And so to make it easy, good side, bad side. <laughs> and by the way, just to bring my point home that I already had before, if you look at this here, there is so much about stacking all these options, all these settings, and now go here. This is all that they have for processing, for post-processing the pictures. This is all. Compared to all the processes that you have in Pics Inside, this is like a joke. So again, we want to focus here. And again, also, like in Pixel Inside, there's a million options what you can change. You will see, you can practically leave everything unchanged. So we start here with the writer zero, raw fits. 
So what do you have to do here? If you work with a one-shot color camera, ensure to click here for spare, just to be sure that you have color picture at the end. If you shoot mono, deactivate that. And now the really amazing part here is this algorithm. And usually if you shoot a galaxy, you just have a default light pollution filter. Adaptive every disk is fine. But you have a lot more options here. If we go down, here I can actually choose my mono filter. If I choose mono, hydrogen alpha, sulfur 2, oxygen 3. So I can choose right away what filter I'm using. But then there's something even cooler below. If you're using a narrow band filter like a Optolong L Extreme or Antlia ALPT, you can actually select that here, HAO3 color, and it will take that into consideration. And you can even, and this is for me just the greatest feature, actually extract out of your narrow band um, filter picture the HA and the O3. So I actually used an Antlia ALPT filter for the picture I'm processing, so I also select that here. With that, we go to the writer number one here. Here I can actually keep this checked if I have, if I shoot mono and I have multi-channels. So I want to do the different filters right in one, just register it together. That's not the case here. I use a one-shot color camera. If I shot on multiple nights, then I can actually use the multi-session processing and it will ensure that everything is registered together. Not the case here, I did it all in one session. And I can use this to auto-detect if I already have a master or integration. I also deselect that, I usually like to choose that myself. So, here I have to state what I'm actually shooting. This will just actually define the file name. So it's M17, the Swan Nebula, which I will do now. And then I will start adding my files. I go to Light. I have here my light frames and I'll just take now a sample of it so that it goes faster. Okay, you see, they're here. Now I could do that too with the flat, dark, dark, flat and biases. But the cool part is, app actually saves always the master, flat, dark, dark, flat and so on. So if I have that, I can choose that now. And I have them, I know I shouldn't do that for the flat, but sometimes I feel a little bit lazy. And I also do it for the flat. So I choose here my flat master, open. Then I have a master dark, it was 180 seconds, so that's this one. Then I have a master dark flat, so the corresponding master dark flat. Just this one. Then my master bias. An app even saves the bad pixel map when it does it the first time. So if I use the same camera like I do, then I can also choose this one. Okay, so I have now only one file each for all of the calibration frames. I have here 11 light frames. So I have everything that I need actually process this picture. And now I know there will be so many other um, options, calibrate, analyze, stars, register, normalize, and integrate. And you know what? I don't care. What a lot of people confirm is if you do a standard processing, the defaults are great. You don't have to touch anything. Obviously, when you start to do mosaics or stuff like that, yes, then by all means you have to change a few things. But by default stacking, just leave everything like it is. The only thing here in Integrate that's interesting, if you have a multi-channel, then you can actually choose if you want to integrate it by channel or just put everything already together or both. And with the multi-session option, it's the same. So usually as a default with the multi-session, you integrate everything together right at once. With the multi-channel, obviously you integrate by channel, but you could choose that. Below is another thing which is quite interesting, and that's 
the lights to stack. So if I have, for example, 100 lights, yes, obviously I already preview them, I throw already the worst ones out, but still I could say, for the sake of quality, I give them a 10%, you know, or 20% buffer where I say it can throw the worst 10% or 20% out to even boost the quality more. And it shows you then how many lights it will consider of the total number. So I will do it now 10% just to show you. But the whole rest of it, just leave it like it is. Everything's fine. And then just click on integrate. Okay again, and that's it. Let it run. Okay, and here we go. You see I've opened the window now so that you could see how it processes. It took about five minutes or so. It's hard to state how long it takes. It really depends on your computer, how many cores, how much memory, um, how many pictures you have to integrate. This is now the complete picture. It's obviously shown in a stretch manner and you instantly understand now also why AstroPixel processor has a little bit of bad reputation as being for the Facebook generation. Because what you can do now, you can now um, select stretch, you can just change it a little bit, the contract, the sharpness and so on, click save and then claim that you actually have finished the processing. And we all know from picks inside, <laughs> there's a little bit more work to it. So, my recommendation, once the stacking stopped, forget about all of that, imagine it's just black, and the only thing you should focus on is save. Save it in an unstretched manner, as fits, and that's it. That's all you should do. And you finish with the stacking. And now when it's saved, when I open it now in Pix Inside, what you see it, it's completely unstretched. And if I stretch it now, you see it's like it would have been stacked with any other stacking software. So now the real post-processing part starts in Pix Inside, as you would have stacked it here or anywhere else. But just to sum it up, the reason why it might make sense to use AstroPixel processor for stacking is that it's faster, that it's easier, and it is more reliable. There are less moments where this application makes problems because whatever doesn't seem to be optimal. But my experience is whatever you feed into it, you get something decent out of it and you can continue working in PixInside. I hope that was valuable and I'm really thrilled to hear about your experience or your opinion about AstroPixel processor. Please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below. Thanks a lot. See you next time and clear skies.